Howdy, everyone. Hope you're having. <laughs> hope you're having a good night. Oh yeah, it's time for D and D, and we're totally not gonna die. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's time for happy Barovian fun times. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun. So today we have uh, all of our team here. We're very glad to Ooh. have Miss Misery playing Seagrid today. Seagrid uh, was part of the party, and then her adventuring partner, Hannah, played by Amy, <laughs> dashed on ahead, as is Hannah's want, and uh, Sigrid was kind of left in the cold, caught a cold, and yeah. is now <laughs> in recovery in Arash now. Uh, we've... I've been looking for you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. She looked everywhere. She looked like there and there. Outside, <laughs> inside. <laughs> uh, we've got Tammy playing Torin Forrester. Nice. And Shelby back again with Tristan Mr. Tree Scalegrow. And Adam with Kendrick Dantier Cuthelian. Nice. All right. So we're getting into it today. So since the last time in Barovia, you have had a terrible storm pass over, and you rescued a great number of furs from a family of trappers who had some family trubs. <laughs> they had a discussion. Uh, aggressive negotiations. <laughs> you also managed to save and rescue three elves out of the forest. They were also not expecting to be in Barovia. Making the best of it. And your winter clothes are still quickly falling apart, but they'll still make do for the moment. Uh, and those you got from the hair and hair uh, from very nice old man. Tonight, you are in a different part of town. Uh, and I say a different part of town in that it's the storm outside has intensified again and made it really difficult to leave. It's a good thing that Sigrid finally showed up. Um, it at least provided an excuse for you to get some much needed rest. So all of your long rest recharges are in. You've got your maximum hit points. If you had any spell slots that needed filling, then they're filled. Your hosts tonight at this establishment in the Seven Tables Inn are Marku and Krina Greelan. Uh, they've invited you in, it seems, because they're just quite the gossips, and the Greelan family owns this establishment. They've just got this large common room that they let out to passerbys in order to you know, pay off what taxes they've got placed on them by the Burgomaster. The food that you have before you is cheap, subpar. <laughs> <laughs> like the soup is a little on the thin side and the drinks may be watered down. But uh, every, a lot of people who are in town from before are here tonight. It's been cold, but uh, even there, off in the corner, you get to see uh, Gregory from the Hair and Hair. He's talking to a rather large man uh, who keeps asking what happened to the little wolf pup that he had, and Gregory says it ran off in the storm just before it hit. Oh, you know. I should have bought it from him. Yeah, we should have. You gotta go with those instincts. <laughs> Who knows what could have happened? Could have had a wolf companion already. <laughs> it would have been so cool. Well, it's been that kind of night. Um, <laughs> Secret is at least uh, catching up from a lot of rest with the rest of you who were just meeting. As the howling of the winds outside appear to die down for one of the lulls of this storm 
Mark Agrilon, one of the proprietors, approaches y'all. He's kind of um, a little old man. Uh, they grow him this way as they get in this part of the country. And as he gets to your table, serving you a brand new mug of, like, not exactly dirty water, but... <laughs> Excuse me. I wonder if I might have a moment. I told Krina that we shouldn't bother you, but she insisted I come over. It's my nephew, you see, Vassil, his friend Damu. They'd gone over to Velaki for supplies. It's the town just west of us, and well, they were due back last evening, but then the storm hit, and well, now it's the next evening, and they're still not back. And he starts uh, filling up your the rest of the drinks. You notice that maybe some of you haven't touched the drinks. Um, just kind of shrugs, like normally I wouldn't worry, but the storm and recent events they just give me pause and. Uh, and he'll... Are you a werewolf too? <laughs> oh my what? god! Thank you! Anna! Thank you! <laughs> we haven't had the like... Uh, what have you told anyone in town about what happened? You showed up with three elves. We said nothing about the werewolves. No, we would have said uh, what's his face was dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and Laszlo was died, and we did not, not find, find Alina. Yeah. Okay. So, so Laszlo was wanted, dead. If she yes. wanted to come back, then she could, but we wouldn't say that she was dead in case she showed up, and they were like, we heard you were dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. What would you have said about Alina's baby? Because everyone knew that she was pregnant. Did you find we any never, evidence? We never, we never found her. Yeah, we never found anything of her. Okay. Most everyone then will have assumed that she died. Uh, mm -hmm. Nothing could have taken care of that storm. The storm has even prevented people from going out and picking up Lazlo's body. Mm -hmm. Like, I assume, unless any... I don't think any of you picked it up to bring back. No. That's we, no, it'll keep it until spring, and then you can go get it and bury You'll it. smell it. <laughs> you'll, you'll find it. Follow your nose. I, I performed rights, but... It's fine. It's I fine. Mean, we had enough trouble getting over the river to begin with, with a dead body. <laughs> Yeah, she, yes, my brother had a little bit of trouble with that. Oh, yeah, everybody would understand. Uh, good, good. Okay, so this this would be the main reason why Marku is coming over to you. And as he's kind of puts down the refilling jug, uh, he kind of fumbles with his apron that he's got on and a washcloth, moves it aside, and brings out a, a very old, very brown bag. Uh, it's it's like a coin purse. If coin purses had like children and were very small, uh, <laughs> there's only like the merest of clinks. And he says, "We don't have much, but we could scrape together a modest reward if you were able to find our boys." There's, uh, so they're asking that his nephew Vasil and friend Demu do back yesterday. Storm hit. They should have been on the west pass from Velaki. So you want to go us to go after them? I. Well, if there are, where. If there are wolves out here, we want to see their bodies brought back at the very least. Um, wait. Hmm? I'm gonna. Who's sitting next to me? Probably me, because I know you can't be trusted. I'm. A, I'm gonna lean over. She's and whisper. probably sitting between us, so that <laughs> we don't do anything terrible. So I'm gonna yeah. lean over and whisper to Torin. Did we ever ID the body that was getting eaten by hawks? No. Uh, what did your what did the boy that we're trying to find look like? Oh, he would have looked like my self just in a younger days and he'll describe a boy with black hair and uh, kind of like a large face, like very wide, uh that his favorite 
jacket that was gifted to him by Marku was uh, this kind of blue, almost a suede, uh, long coat. And Demu would have been out in a red coat. Or as close to red as they can get. It's kind of a mauve. So this doesn't sound like the body that we yeah. found under the hawk's? No, the hawk's body did not have any sort of long coat on it. It looked okay. like more of a regular adventuring fair. Okay. Um, question for you. If we do this for you, uh, do you have anything that we... The coats that we have are a bit unoptimal. They're kind of falling apart. Oh, take a look. Like, mm, oh, yes, I see. Like the <laughs> yes. uh, the fur is just bare on just, one of your yep. sleeves. Like, yep. Is uh, there anything... Not the good bear, like an empty bear. <laughs> is there any? If we are to come back, we can definitely make sure that the coats get back here. Um, but if we are to go out in this weather, if if we don't have something better than these, we might die ourselves. I could certainly lend you one of mine, and I think we have a couple of people here. We might, and he looks around the room. Uh, he sees like Gregory and his everybody's coat is kind of like either hanging on themselves or off their chair. It's like they're good boys. I think I think we could muster up a few things at least Don't for we? tonight. Hmm? And uh, Tor- uh, Torn will look pointedly at Hannah and go, don't we have an entire stack of furs? Mm-mm, I gave them all to the guy. You gave three of them. Yeah, and there were three. There were four. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> I suppose it would cut into what we can trade with the Vistani once they get in, but my Krina, she's good with her soul needles. Yes. If you've we got, if we've got an extra pa- stack of furs, we should, could definitely whip something together. We could make that happen. Secrets from the north, so she's fairly well. She's already fairly well equipped for the cold. It was just that really bad night out in the blizzard <laughs> that really did it. But so well equipped. <laughs> I, so well equipped, she survived. Basically, can, can you see whispers in roll twenty, Paul? I'm or checking. no? I haven't sent one, but if this thing here, give it a try. Let's see. Oops, hold on. Helps if I actually type your name. <laughs> uh, so Mark is saying that. He can definitely have his wife make adjustments and do the final tannings to any furs that you would be able to provide. They just don't have any furs themselves. Wonderful. We'd be able to help out with that then. As who? Mm-hmm. It says, <laughs> says everyone Dantier. who says <laughs> everyone who saw you put the furs into your bag. And they're my furs. I took Uh, them. Don't you think it would be cohesive for us to not die? Hmm. I mean, like, if you want to go out there and freeze to death, you're more than welcome to. Then we'll take them off your body. You have to find them first. Uh, Well, we'll have time because we'll be able to use you for warmth at the very least. (laughs) Right, but the thing is, is that I get... You're greedy. We understand this, but... Okay. So then, for what you'll be needing then, there's a couple of coats available here in the three... All right, sorry, in the seven tables. Uh, You can borrow Grigori's coat... Uh, his what? Would we have found anything in Laszlo's house since he's dead? And we slept there. I, uh, they I, would have. They would have had a pair of coats. Yes. Okay. Would any of them fit me? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's Very the good. one you definitely need to borrow from uh, Gregory's partner over at the other table. Oh, it's a rather guy. large bloke. Uh, his name's Oleg, and though he's a little grumpy about 
losing his coat. He's like, well, I kind of like this vest anyway. And he'll hand over the coat to Mr. Tree. I'll, like, I'll give him a gold as far as, like, it, in case I lose it or something. Oh. Well, that's mighty kind of you. All right. And uh, so, transaction. It's like, well, I got a good horse blanket anyway. All right. So, that's, so you have that's one, that. and then we have two from Laszlo and what's her face's house. Right. Let. Yeah. So, yeah. Oleg's coat on Mr. Tree. And you've got mm -hmm. two from uh, Laszlo and Alina. Uh, so, those are three good coats. Did Sigrid need one, or does she have her own? Sigrid's got her own. Okay. okay. I will give Kendrick the girl coat. Eh. Kendrick will gladly wear the girl coat. It looks fantastic on him. What color is it? What color is it? <laughs> I'll let you pick. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a garish um, paisley purple. Oh, it's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Nice. Of course. I look, fan I look like a pimp. <laughs> with your hat with the and giant with the wide brim hat and this gaudy as coat. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then uh, Hannah will hand over enough furs for a coat for herself. Nice. Because uh, everyone else has one. Sure. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes. Okay. Um so we've got coats and they're very secure, they're not falling apart at this point. That's a good point. Um, Velaki's along the main road, but to the west? west. And he says they would have been out in the Seven Tables best cart. They were trying to make some trades with what they had left. So they were mostly trading like foodstuffs um, in exchange for uh, some additional clothing and other supplies. So you should be out looking for Vassal. Uh, he's a young lad, wide face, a blue coat. Uh, that's Marku's nephew. And then there's another boy there named Demu. And he should have a red coat, also dark of hair. And they're out in they a cart. Bright, are they bright colored coats? Yeah. Uh, the Wonderful. kids. The kids like to. We'll wear. be able to see them then. Let's Hopefully, see. there should be a cart with the number seven on it. Oh, okay. Oh, this and of course, Betsy. Like a race, one. like a racing cart. The boys put it on. Okay. It, they said it makes it go faster. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, our mule Betsy. Oh goodness. Oh. Um. Okay. And question for you. Um, if we happen upon them and it's closer to Velaki than it is to here, do you want us just to aid them in making finishing the journey instead of turning them around? If if they didn't make it to Velaki before the storm hit they're, oh, right. They would right. not be in good shape. Okay. Bring back, bring back our boys. We'll try. All right. There is this short break in the storm. So you have uh, a lot of overland snow. Uh, how's your walking speed? 30. 30. Nice. 30. 30. All right. Strong smell of uh, evergreen trees outside. Anything else that you all want to do before you get a move? Um, are the where are the elves? They would uh, have been staying with you to the house. Okay. Um, it's a very crowded cabin at this point. Uh, Dantier will make a pit stop at the cabin just to let them know where we're going. Mm -hmm. um, let them know what the story is. Um, Aya has the older matronly teacher elf is kind of sitting in a, a rocking chair and she's covered up with a shawl that she found and she kind of sees what you're saying and nodding and it's a best of luck. And then she kind of 
continues looking into the fireplace that the her two wards have like started. She's kind of still out of it from yesterday. Uh -huh. And uh, Nimmel and Erlen are like carving up new arrows. They're like, we we'll, we they're they've been building up their strength, eating a few things. Wonderful. Nice. Okay. Hmm. All right, then if nothing else. I think that Mr. Tree wants to do a little druid craft real quick to determine if it's going to be super snowy or not for the rest of our trip, even though it's still sort of a snowstorm. That sounds but like a good thing. I can druid craft to determine uh, what the weather will be like. Ooh. Nice. It's going to snow. <laughs> Let's try that out. Okay, so Judecraft, you go at a miniature of Mount Baratok and what looks like a lot of woods forms out of crystal flakes there thickened up in your palm and clouds make themselves appear out of small snowflakes that have wandered into your palms and you see them gather for what in your druid craft you've been trained to know is about three hours and then you see that there is a great wind and that it gets a lot thicker And then after that wind, uh, that's another, it's uh, about an hour of strong sheer wind before just the thickness collapses under it. And so there's going to be expected heavy snow tonight. And you've just got these kind of uh, just primo twilight hours to go. You've got about four hours, three of them without snow, the fourth one with a lot of wind. And how far is Velaki? That's it would a good be question. at least a day and a half. On a cart. <sighs> but we're we're not taking a cart, right? We're this is true. Walking. Walking there. Um. I then yes, there is something else I want to do. Oh. Um, before I leave the tavern, um, I'm gonna check with the old man and ask if there's any usual pit stops along the way where we can find and camp. Um, anywhere that might be safe from a storm or offer shelter. Because if it's going to be that long of a trip by um, cart alone, um, they'll probably have, you know, rest points. Well, honestly, this is why we don't get many visitors up here in the rush now. <laughs> Between us and Velaki, it's terrible. Fair mountains and the Swalik woods. Okay. You. You'd probably be better off finding a cave to be in, but barring that... Understood. I would advise not even going into the woods. Okay. <laughs> Stay on the road where you can see anyone coming. That is, it, that is good advice. Thank you. Um, awesome. All right. Then at uh, moving out, you've got the Druidcraft weather report, <laughs> and there was something from last time traveling. Do you have an ability to cover difficult terrain a little better? Um, I think Druids do. Where's that next level? Uh, hmm. If it comes up, we'll find out. So heading out, heading out from the village, then yeah. uh, you can head direct west pretty easily. So that for the first hour of tromping about, uh, there's at least no woods in your way. Everything is almost in a deadened state uh, to where you finally start seeing gray and very dark green leaves. As you come down out the mountains, I need you to do all a uh, group survival check. Ooh, this went really well last time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, hey. Oh, God. Oh, 19 for Hannah. Nice. Uh, 15 for Dantir. 
Nice. Oh. First roll of the night. Oh, no. Failed. <laughs> All right. Still, she's the only one who got below 15. Yeah, see? That's good news for a group roll. That means the average goes up, even though someone tried to bring it down. Um, <laughs> uh, so Such you're... Yeah, you keep on the path, and uh, even when you were starting to go off the path and wandering a bit, something sparkly, maybe. <laughs> uh, I was distracted by my thoughts. <laughs> it's... Uh, Torin just seems to be uh, thinking on something... Um, you might have even seen her speaking out loud some of these thoughts, but never something that you can hear. Uh, but you're able to keep going at a steady pace, and to by the time you get through the second hour, you've come into a short valley. So Mount Baratok has a lot of foothills around it, and you need to descend uh, into various... There's wide valleys, there's narrow ones that you've come through, uh, before it goes onto like an even plane of part of the foothills, and then it dips down again. The drifts that you're walking through are deep, and getting into this another valley that you've come across, there's a junction here in the road, and so it goes west from here, and then it also has a junction that crosses south. Now to one side of this crossing you see a wagon mm. and it's cargo spread out in the snow. Mm. The corpse of a, of a mule. Oh. And what's likely its owner are laying partially covered in snow on the ground. <laughs> so about um, two hours out. I'm going to go investigate the body. Ditto. Okay. I'm going to let them investigate the body while I look for tracks leading to or from the cart. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm just going to do a circle around the cart looking for anything, anything um, out of place, any damage, any claw marks, same, similar to what the, what's being already being done. Very nice. Mr. Tree? Uh, I'll check the mule! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Don't eat the Danger. mule! Bye. All right. Uh, so, Mr. Tree, I'll need a medicine check from you. And I think same from Torin and Dantir. And then for where Sigrid and Hannah are, uh, either perception, if you're just going to kind of keep your distance from a lot of things, or investigation, if you actually want to, like, pop some snow off of these things and turn them over. That's a 24 for Hannah's investigation. Okay, Hannah is just like throwing snow left and right. It's, it's like, uh, hey, that looks like something. Uh, 18 for my medicine check. And a 19 for mine. I got Dang. a 12! Go, bro! 12 for my, uh, for, for my uh, perception. Nice. Okay. So with those... Um, so the, the lad out here with the mule is... Uh, he's got a mauve almost red coat that's been stained dark and it's his throat is just gone it's been torn uh out and uh mr tree very nearby the mule here is in a similar situation like the the throat of the mule has been torn out and it looks like there's been partially eaten For... Does this go ahead. Uh, Does this look like potentially it would be from a wolf? Let's see. With your medicine checks, they were pretty high. Eighteen and nineteen. Plus, you had just come across some very <laughs> devastating yep. wolf. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's what I was wondering about. If it looked similar to the ones we had just seen. Um, as you like probe the where the throats are were your fingers kind of match up with the size of the holes and it comes together in a way along with some it's almost ridiculous to have noticed but you do the bruising that's on the other sides of this boy's neck uh, because of the parts that are missing but your your hands can kind of fit around where these injuries are Ew. oh oh 
is is this person also dark of hair and do I think this is Demu? Uh, you do, based on the description and the red coat here. Uh, it's sad. Uh, for those on the perimeter, for Sigrid and Hannah, for Sigrid, you aren't able to spot anything fresh but the snow has been coming down today in a way that will only cover up things that have been uh, here too long and so you actually see some treads here through the drift that looks like some snow has collapsed um, it seems to be at least uh, four sets of tracks. They have not very long strides, but it looks like they moved in and then out into the mountains. Uh, Do you know what kind of species this is? This looks like it's humanoid. The treads are close mm -hmm. enough together that they could have been somebody's legs. And so the snow just covered up footprints and the like, but you can still see like where the snow has buried in uh, through these drifts. Hannah, what you find uh, going through these materials and things that have fallen out of the cart, there's at least one uh, metal barrel that looks like it's been drained of uh, from the smell of it from the freezing ice on it. It looks like it was drained of water. And a couple of other boxes out here of uh, blankets, some rope. There's a small package. It looks like it was wrapped up in like brown paper, just uh, tied with twine, except there's very clearly the twine was cut, and this package like ripped, and the box is still there, though. Huh. It's like a, it's like a gaudy jewelry box. Like there's filigree on it and there's carving on it, but it doesn't look like it was done really well. Like there's a little carving of a, a little wolf, uh, but it's the one where like the nose is too big and that the eyes are looking in slightly different directions. <laughs> is there anything in it? If I open it up? Oh, you're opening it? Yeah. There is a very large amethyst necklace. Like it has a big piece here and then smaller gems around it. And then it ties in, um, you think this is probably not gold or even silver? Like this just might be like a steel like necklace. Like brass or something? Right, some some cheap metal. Um, was there any, if I look at the paper wrapped around it, does it have any like address on it or anything like that? It does not. So All let's right. see. She'll, she'll pocket the box and the necklace. Okay. Uh, so, Sigrid, you've got... You've seen tracks. Hannah found uh, a lot of like household supplies and one necklace there. And, of course, Torin and Dentier and Mr. Tree, you found uh, two very dead people. Well, horse and person. Uh, then uh. there's... And the cart out there so i'll um once everybody has found everything get together to discuss things um explain what we found uh this is probably demu um the other one of vassal we didn't see any like there wasn't any like scraps of blue fabric around uh -huh. So we found one of them, at the very least. Uh, anything oh. that you guys find that might be helpful in finding the other ones? I found tracks. It's quite possible that they was he was taken. I saw four. They're humanoids, so... Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, find anything good in the cart, Hannah? There's blankets and some household goods and an empty water barrel. Oh, Hannah didn't check the cart. Hannah checked the stuff that had... Yeah, it's just the stuff out. that was strewn around. All right. Anything else? 
I mean, there's stuff in the cart probably, but I haven't looked yet. It's been overturned. Like when probably when the mule went down, the cart also did. It's like there's wheels in the air. Well, if, do we want to take? Do you want to go find the other one first? That would probably be a good idea. He might still be alive. Is the the cart itself? Does it look like it can be righted? Righted, or is it just it's? It hasn't. It looks like it's taken <clears throat> some no major damages to it. Like there's some scratches on the outside, but they're not deep like would have been wolf scratches. And the wheels, just by pushing on them, they will spin. It just looks like it's completely flipped over. So it just takes some speed. And we don't have a horse. And well, technically you don't have a horse. I was more not wanting to leave this poor child on the side of the road. Uh, okay. So if we could... Can I try and see if I can flip it? Or somebody can help I me could, flip it? I could help with the, with the flipping. <laughs> That's good. Pretty okay. Big. It's not a super big wagon. Go ahead and uh, both of you give me some athletics checks. Let's see how that goes. Get on either side of this cart. Uh, athletics. 14. 14 and 17. All right. That's a nice average. So uh, with a bit of a hoisting, there is a cart that goes up and up. And uh, what are you guys doing while they're doing this? Just, it's still discussing. And they say, like, let's go get this cart. Um, is there anything else lying about? Um, that would that catches I'm just going to do a quick um, actually right. since she's mentioned the uh, tracks I'm going to go take a look at them and see if they remind me of the werewolves very nice uh, you can give me either a nature check or a survival check for that and I will be performing last rates while this survival, is going on survival definitely I get a whole one more to my bonus um, ah <laughs> It's going to be a 21. Nice. Right. And while last rites are being passed over on Demu, Dantir is looking at these tracks. And uh, which skill did you use for this? Survival. These don't look like... They're humanoid, but in your time, uh, adventure, and you've come across like kobolds, goblins. These are taller and you can't see any footprints, same as what Sigrid was trying to do, but the the waist and leg size looks like uh, they might have been uh, of the humanoid type. Uh, it would have been on the skinny side. Okay. And maybe people size, because you can kind of measure where your waist is. Mm -hmm. and, and so while you're looking at that, all uh, Sigrid and Mr. Tree are two biggest burliest members of the group now that I think about it flip over this cart and you can kind of hear a frump as uh, it lands on the other side and uh, then you're all able to hear a <gasps> as the very bruised and barely breathing body of Vasil is uncovered from under the cart oh snap okay I am Running over, and I am curing wounds, <laughs> and I am also going to use um, Circle of Mortality. Okay. Oof. Which means he automatically gets. Well, no, that's if he has zero hit points. Never mind. Oh, good. Question. I don't know. Is he? Does he have zero hit points? Is he that low? He's breathing. Um, uh, Is there's he... something I just also want to ask. And usually, when uh, people do magic of sort, they sometimes have like colors that, that come out for your healing. Uh, do you imagine that something comes out from Torin when he calls upon this? There's there's probably like a slight sort of goldenish glow. Nothing fancy because he's not a fancy person, so he would probably try to keep it. But like, you know, I'm when you put thinking. your hand over like um, a candle and it gets mm -hmm. kind of like that warm sort of like looks like you're illuminated from within. Right. Okay. And then that's transferred in, in that way. All right. So, Torin, you're trained in this, and this is what you do. So you've rushed over to Vassal's body, and he's at least breathing somewhat. He doesn't appear to be conscious, and he's got, uh, because you checked Demu's body, he's got these very similar slashing wounds around his throat uh, okay. and bruising. 
Oh. Um, um, so he gets a total of nice 13 hit points back. Nice. Oh, fantastic. I rolled max. So he is somewhat... You see some of the uh, the tears around his throat and his neck, they start to close and uh, as the glowing is kind of like transfers from you onto Vassil, you see that glow stay hovering. Like it pauses just over his wounds and then moves to another part of his damaged body and then it kind of uh, some of the bruising goes away, and then most of the glow stays. And so, from what you've determined, uh, like there's there's very minor things that have been corrected here. And so you see like 13 points of healing floating around Vasil, uh, and his breathing is at least uh, not coming in gasps now, but it looks like he is still in a very bad way. And your healing is hovering over him. Uh, do, I, do I feel like something's preventing? Um, yes, absolutely. There is some neither negative energy or some sort of curse upon him that is preventing this heal from getting to him. It's not dismissing the heal, uh, but it's something is stuck. Get him back to the town. Has anyone seen anything like this before? Have Have I ever seen anything like this before? Hmm. No. I guess nature check, medicine check. But I have read about any of this in my school studies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's definitely a medicine check. <laughs> so, medicine check. Uh, that and is going to be a dirty twenty. Group medicine check. Why not? <laughs> Uh, Everybody's worrying. Yeah, ten. Yeah, 30, well, 20 for the only her. the only reason I would even get on this is because technically Kelimvor was a lycanthrope way back in the day mm-hmm. before he became a god. So. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. You have just ten for me. Got a nineteen for Anna. Okay, doke. That's fair. So we got a ten, a ten, twenty, thirteen. All right. First hand experience and some church lore. This doesn't look like lycanthrope wounds, and uh, so it doesn't look like a curse. This may be a life drain by undead. It's oh, where any shit. attempts to restore hit points automatically fail. Uh, so this boy needs some some other medical attention. He's going to need stitching. He's going to need uh, either bloodletting or blood transfers. Uh, he's going to need everything that can be done to keep him alive until this blood drain goes away. I mean, sorry, until this life drain goes away. Definitely or or some back. kinds of recoveries. Um, I while, while sharing the fact that this young man needs to get back, I'm going to do um, yes, I'm going to do my um, Eyes of the Grave, Ooh. which um, I can open my awareness to magically detect undead until the end of my next turn. I know the location of any undead within 60 feet that isn't behind total cover and isn't protected from divination magic. Nice. I am glad you did that. I am suspicious. So there is no corporeal undead or incorporeal within 60 feet of you outside of cover, but you get the sense that they were definitely here and that these wounds are definitely of the undead. And uh, so this kind of matches with the hands at the throat and this life drain. These are these are the work of uh, more powerful undead. This this isn't something that I can fix. We need to get this young man back to Aya. Agreed. I don't I don't know that I can keep him alive that long, but I can try. Hmm? Uh, can 
would what, we be able to pull the cart together? Do we can we put him in the cart and pull it? You definitely have good working wheels. There's an yeah, X I'm mule. <laughs> hey, oh, we, can, we can all five can of us. Wait, you turned into a lizard before. You turned into a horse. Yeah. yeah. You've I seen could? a mule, technically. Yeah, you have seen a mule. I, I could turn into this. The live alive. one, though, right? Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll turn into a mule. All right. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Tree goes from <laughs> six feet uh, to four legs and <laughs> sturdy back. And the harness and the like, you'll need to take off of uh, old Betsy. But uh, that at least will get you connected to this wagon. Uh, wow. How about for keeping Vassil warm? What are you going to do? Uh, you said there were blankets. Yeah, there's a bunch of blankets. And, blankets and yeah. stuff. So uh, Don Tiro will grab a bunch of them out of there and wrap him up in it. Okay. Uh, anything else done with the rest of the stuff? The, the rope, the oil? Um, the that if we can put it into the cart because the the horse was able to pull it before so hopefully they'll still so be able to pull it true there's only like five more people now uh, yeah but we're not all gonna get in the cart we can walk next I'll time. be walking next to yeah oh, okay um I'll Corin should probably you're, be in the cart with you're going yes. to walk Kendrick yep um oh Mr. Tree can I ride you that's a personal question, usually. Um, and I'm, as we walk, um, I'm going to have uh, Rafe here out, also a hand on the whip. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm walking. I'm walking ahead of everybody, and just kind of keeping an eye out. No doke. And I am doing what I can for this poor boy. I got all my tricks. I will use all of them. Nice. Okay. With do you have a healer's kit? Um, I don't have a healer's kit, but I have some class and some racial ability that I will just <laughs> pour in there. Nice. It's saying, you saying some Sorry. Go ahead. You can also make bandages and blankets. That's true. Mm -hmm. I'd probably yeah. tear my my vestments apart at this point because the blankets are good quality. And... <laughs> my clothes are crap, I guess. <laughs> if only you had kept some of those old furs. Oh, those could tear so easily. Anyway. <laughs> 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 got good coats alright vestments on and that'll at least keep the bleeding so yeah some definite uh, technical work is going to be keeping Vasil alive so you've got two hours out uh, with the mule Mr. Tree uh, <laughs> and the cart I will need uh, let's see writing that I will need some survival checks for actually from Mr. Tree, Mr. Mule Tree. Okay. I, I will need uh, an athletics check. Athletics. Okay. Let me From... double check how Wild Shape works. Do I take its strength? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that would be okay. mules have plus two. So you can Yay. roll me a d20 plus two. Okay. That's a. Ooh, that's a natural twenty. <laughs> nice. <laughs> womp womp womp. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Mr. Tree is just blazing it. Through this, uh, <laughs> you make it. You make it back. The rest of you have to like catch up. Uh, Torin and I think Dantier up there, or uh, Hannah's riding on Mr. Tree. Was that it? If if he would let me. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah is like trailing behind Secret and Dantier, and uh, Torin is up keeping Vassal alive, uh, moving at this breakneck pace. Uh, you're able to make it back into Orash now. Uh, in in like one hour, so oh, you made it back um, completely. Oh no! Yes. Can I, can oh, I retcon God. something real quick? I was about to say we left the kid by the side of the and road. Have, like, if Sigrid, since she's real strong, wanted to grab the corpse of the boy in the red coat. Uh, all right. No, we panicked. We forgot. I oh, mean, okay. you I'll, saved I'll... one, but we I'll... know where the other one is. It'll stay there for a little bit. I'll take off my good cloak because it's a decent cloak and has a my fur um, thing across the back. Okay. Put it in the cart and go back and run and grab the body and shove it over my shoulder and kind of just jog back to everybody. That's fair. Uh, because, you know, Mr. Tree and Torin are taking care of this living person who needs it, and the rest of you are definitely not riding any of those things. 
So <laughs> you have the space to do that. Not uh, yet. <laughs> uh, and then just kind of beat feet uh, there to Oreshno. So you come in to the town and it's already late. Now it's um, uh, it's definitely the twilight of the evening now. So maybe the seven-ish there. The You don't really see when the sun goes down here so far in the village. There's been the storm. There's been just it's super overcast all the time uh but you definitely see that there's like lanterns lit uh around the town now uh, i'll for... just start calling for aya like i don't know where she is i'm just gonna start yelling her name yeah nice. i'll go the opposite direction likewise yelling okay um there's like a house where you all live and it's <laughs> that's where you left <laughs> oh, are, but <laughs> i was thinking of a different of a different person never mind well i didn't know she could be at the seven tables she could be somewhere else it's been three hours she could be anywhere right. um <laughs> okay so uh as you're coming into town then uh and and your yells are heard uh, aya doesn't materialize at first or at least where you can see her but uh krina greelin uh who's you kind of saw behind the bar there at the seven tables and she looks out the door so it's like marco marco they found him and uh because they see that you're coming back with a cart and Torin is in the back like keeping uh vasil like warm and or, or bandaged but his head is like lolling it's like we have a hospice here in Urashno. It's squat brick building, high peaked roof. Uh, we'll we'll meet you. And she yells inside, Oleg, Oleg, you get off your oh, go out there and you tell Glovia that we're coming. And then you see Oleg, who is coming out in only a vest, and <laughs> he looks like he's had a few. Like they've been either waiting there or like waiting in the tavern for you. Um, and you see him like huffing, but he books it. And so you've been like on the south side of town. He books it uh, a little further uh, into the downtown, like going across the town square. And you can turn the cart, and uh, it's uh, going across. You see, like anywhere else, it might be like a church because of the roof on here. But there's, uh, it's otherwise a building where. When you catch up, Oleg has already been outside, uh, sorry, inside, and when he comes back out, uh, there is a woman of modest look. Uh, she's got like this green dress on, uh, but as she comes out to receive you, a uh, little black haired girl will come out also. She looks like a teen. Uh, Oleg is, uh, looks like he's about to throw up on the outside of the place. <laughs> It's just like, I can't. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't drink anymore. <laughs> um, it's, it's about this time where I lose my wild shape and I'm just a dragonborn with like a. Oh, you no. have you have a bit in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> the leather straps. You're yeah. like a bondage dragonborn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this is who we are now. Uh, the woman with uh, brown hair who's come out of the green dress. She says inside serena will direct you where to set him and the young girl with the black hair she's got it in braids um she puts up her hands uh to help get down mm -hmm. vassal will help okay. awkwardly uh and the rest of you are like coming from behind at this point and ola gives out a wave and a shout like hey <laughs> uh, and then he actually does throw up <laughs> <laughs> I'll use I'll use thaumaturgy to increase my voice volume to let everyone know where we are. Nice. Uh, well, as you do that, uh, then where the Vaduva's house was and where y'all staying, you do see uh, Aya come out, and she is not covered anymore in uh, that blanket cloth. It though it does look like she's gotten. Um, she's wearing one of the boys' gears around her. As like a makeshift coat. Uh, so the boys are going to stay back. Uh, she comes out and sees Dantir and and goes over to this house. Um, when I get there, I'll press the dictation, the vomit off of Oleg. Oh, that's that's real handy there. <laughs> and he holds out his hand and is like, Oleg! 
Don't you? Um, I'm just gonna wait out here. Uh, this is probably for the best. <laughs> I'm gonna. Good. I'm gonna go in the building and find somewhere to lay down the body on it. I put it down respectfully and close his eyes and just walk away and you know stand there over the body just in case. Okay. The woman in the green dress introduces herself as Glovia, uh, Glovia Falonescu, and when Sigrid comes in with the body, she's directing uh, Torin and uh, Mr. Tree to help Serena take Vasil over to like a an inner room. Uh, in the outside, it's kind of like a lobby. There's a desk. There's a couple of waiting chairs, uh, and then just kind of like uh, a curtained partition. And so you're taking Vassal over to basically some medical cots. Uh, very simple. Very, there's not a lot of metal around here. But when you come in with the Moo's body, she puts up a hand, takes a closer look, and says, you'd better bring that one in here also. And directs you to put it onto not a not one of the soft cots, but there looks like there's a stone table here. Like, it's almost like a plinth. And uh, asks you to put him down here. It's like, I'll need your assistance in a little... in a few moments. Uh, so, total, there's four beds. There's the stone bed and then three cots here. Uh, you can see that there's another table for, like, herbal preparations. There's some small jars and... Uh, as you lay down these two bodies, uh, Glovia starts poking at Vassil's wounds. And Torin will tell her that he's been touched by undead. Hmm. That's a lot of negative energy there. This will need... And she'll look up at you and it's like, Kalimvor? Got the big ol'. You you have this big old scales in there. And it's well, and it's been silvered too. So <laughs> thanks thanks to my little brother, it's a silvered holy symbol. Gaudy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that you're to thank for the recovery of the boys. Well, I may have figured out what was wrong, but we all helped get him here. Mm. These wounds there difficult. There's a woman who can help. Mm -hmm. um, Aya, I called for her. Okay, at this point, Aya will be coming in. And she's got some of her magic in helping, so this will be some checks made here with advantage. Uh, so while uh, what Glovie is going to ask you to do is a couple of technical medical procedures, so there's going to be some sutures. Uh, you're going to have to cut open some of these bandages and uh, tend to the wounds with some of the ointments. She's going to direct Serena. Serena turns out to be her assistant, helps her out uh, here at the hospice. Uh, and while you're doing these, so you do uh, two medicine checks and with advantage. Okay. Um, Aya will be handling some of the <laughs> magical <laughs> curings. Uh, so that's going to be the first one. So that's a seven. And then the second one. The second one. The second one's nice. a nat 20. Goodness. This is why it takes two. Um, with Aya there, uh, kind of she catches him as like he starts bleeding out at a uh, certain part of it with uh, with a little bit of her magic to stabilize him. Uh, some of the cure wounds that you've put on him are still there. Uh, so while that's going on, Glovia is going to like leave this to you. Uh, so it goes gets very serious for a little bit. <laughs> then, I mostly deal with dead people. <laughs> let's it's different when they're alive. Let's hope this is different. And she goes over to where Secret has brought in Demu. And uh, he's got his red coat on. And she also makes some pokes. She looks deep, deep within where like his throat has been torn out. Uh, she says, uh, and so she'll look around and is like, where are Mr. Tree and Hannah? Um, Hannah is slightly nauseous by all of this, so she's outside. Okay. I'm, I'll be near Torin, just like, keep and look. Okay. Uh, so, Hannah, outside, you're met up with by Krina and Mark Ugrilan, the uncle and aunt. 
And they basically ask you, it's like, are the boys inside? Are they okay? How did you find them? What happened? Um, their cart was overturned. We, we think something undead attacked them, possibly. They're having trouble healing him. Oh, Karina's hand just goes through her mouth. Uh, and Marku just kind of like... Are there undead in the area? Barovia is a tough valley. And that's all Krina will say. Uh, but she and Marku kind of like walk into uh, the lobby waiting area. They uh, they don't go any further past the curtain because they can kind of hear you all working and they just kind of like settle into some chairs there. Uh, there's a big man next to you, Hannah, and says like, Oleg! Uh, Hannah. <laughs> Shakes. I saw your... Uh oral pyrotechnics earlier. I can't handle my soup. <laughs> hmm? All right. it's, it's pretty thin soup. <laughs> it's pretty thin. Uh, so Sigrid, where you and Glovia are like looking over Demu, uh, she's going to, she looks back at where Serena is uh, helping out with Torin and Aya. So it's like uh, kind of a trio over there. Um, like, would you happen to be carrying anything Sharp. That's the secret. I have my my sword and my hand axes. But what do you need them for? We will need to be preparing this body for protection from return. How if, so? If your sword needs it, I have a whetstone there upon the counter for such purposes. And... I'll be needing a string of garlic as well. What do you want me to do to this body? To prevent its return, we'll need to be thorough about this. We'll stuff here garlic into the wound. We'll remove the head, put garlic into that as well. And... We'll eventually need to bury it, but I fear with the snow and blizzard as it is, we won't get opportunity in this hard ground. So we'll need to store it um, and then bury it as soon as we can. I I, I look at um at, at the at Torin and say, "Have you heard of this before? What are they doing?" You would have been close enough that you could overhear mm -hmm. it. Does it sound like any funeral rite? Or, I mean, obviously it's dealing with undead stuff. Uh, the garlic part um, sounds familiar with lore. Uh, like folklore? Yeah, the beheading as well. But everything else that you've like seen Glovia handle uh, Vassal's body and the stitches sutures, her medical equipment in here, it looks like she's a pretty technical person. So this is a little, a little out of place. It, it's folklore for... Do I know it's vampires? Do you? Or I will I... allow absolutely any player knowledge of vampires in this campaign. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's folklore remedies for preventing vampirism. Should I do it? I I trust your opinion. We must do this thing tonight. If, if not, don't. there is a risk of this boy becoming one of the night walkers. We, we, you felt the negative energy. If there is a chance of that, we it is it is better to prevent than to be wrong. Exactly. Very well. Well, I'll go sharpen my sword, and when it's needed, I will. I'll like wiggle my hip a little bit because my hands are busy, and I have the silver dagger, like okay. visible. <laughs> so if Sigrid wants to, I'll be like looking at it really quick and then going back to work but like my oh um i think i have a silver hand axe yeah you oh nice yes oh weapon. nice okay okay yeah i'll use that to uh to oh, fantastic. remove that okay uh glovia is going to ask you to crush the garlic with the silvered hand axe and then or any silver blades that you have uh that'll help and uh then she'll ask you to go ahead and do that deed uh while you're working on the boys over here uh, walking on the live boy. Uh, so Hannah, you might hear 
from the outside, you and the Greelands hear this. It's on a stone table, so it's kind of made for this. There's like a groove. Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, which weapon do you use for this secret? I'm using the silver hand axe. It's going to take a little while. So <laughs> you hear a chop and another one, and then you start hearing like stone being hit. <laughs> um, uh, Ole- Oleg's face like goes pale. <laughs> He's like, do not puke again. I can't clean you up like the other one did. And you see him like kind of like hold it. <laughs> like uh, I can't help it. I'm a little sensitive. Um, but on the inside, Sigrid, um, it there's the body is not struggling uh, against you, and you don't see any movement. Uh, so so far, success on that part. Um, and then once that's done, Glovia kind of like looks it over. Um, she picks up the head and uh, kind of places it on the body uh, and puts Demu's hands over it. Uh, and then indicates to you, Sigrid, that there's um, uh, there's like a couple of sheets and to, for you to like cover one over the body. Because then she needs to go back to uh, Vasil. Uh, she comes back over to where Torin and Aya and Serena are. Serena's kind of like handing you th- scissors and, and bandages things. She's not handling it directly. So it's mostly Torin, uh, who you're using every medicine training that you have had. Uh, now that you've got like a. This is a surprisingly good number of tools <laughs> and like clean bandages and things. Um, and like Serena's handing you things that have been uh, like they've been sterilized, they've been heated. Um, uh, to Mr. Tree this would be like I don't know what you had to put a perfectly good needle through fire but <laughs> who knows these peeps um, but when Glovia comes over she kind of gives a couple of like nods at the work you've done and uh, she kind of like says like okay go ahead and sew this up and and so you take like the last bit of stitches and uh says we we can only hope and so within a few moments Vasil is his breathing is now like very slow like some of the poultices that Glovia was put on at the beginning of it um kind of help with pain and that while you're stitching them up uh but torn to your eyes Within a few minutes, you see your glow that's still been hovering about him. It might not be visible to everybody else, but to you, it's it's always there or it's not. You do see that glow go into Vasil at last. And uh, the stitches and the wounds take on a more healthy color. And uh, Glovia kind of lets out a long breath. And uh, she puts... Uh, she brings up a hand up as if like to put a hand on Torin's shoulder, but like kind of looks at Torin, seeing like if this is okay. Mm, he'll kind of like lower the shoulder, like she nods, says. Like, <laughs> Sometimes the healing process needs uh, physical touch. You've done extremely well. You see where Aya is kind of panting at this point like she is still not completely recovered and so she is like put a lot of herself into this as well um but it says like the boy will live at this night you have saved this uh so definitely 50 xp for every single one of you (laughs) for returning vasil to a rationale uh alive uh and then uh glovia will say that this was the undoing of undead. Did you destroy them? We didn't. Oh, yeah. They weren't there. They were, we did not see them around. We figured that it was more important to get him here alive while he still was. Hmm. This metatarsal was showing down here. It must have been quite painful. There must have been a struggle. My family's lived in this village a long, long time, and we've had troubles, but... Do you know where they might be? 
<laughs> all around us, all the time, such as Barovia. And as thankfully, like there's a sigh of breath from everyone, you can see um, Glovia even kind of like a little bit of her wind is knocked out. I'm going to talk to the Greelands before I take rest and looks at Serena. <laughs> Serena, come with us there. Um, after you clean up in here, girl. Uh, and she seems matter of fact about it and Serena kind of like goes about picking up the, the bloody tools and uh, putting them into like some cleaning containers. Uh, and she goes out to the the waiting room and uh, tell the good news about <laughs> one of the boys. <laughs> He's not a vampire. He's not a vampire. We found at that the out. Moment. <laughs> None of them are vampires. None of them are zombies. Um, hey, we're bat we're batting five hundred. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> There's definitely no zombies here today. <laughs> we are one for one. <laughs> Uh, and so, Emmy, Emmy, your cat is possessed. Eh. Well, I mean, we saved the boy, not the cat. <laughs> it happens. Um, and that's when, from outside, you hear the loud clanging of a handbell. Just that dong, dong, dong. And Hannah, you see in there in the town square, there is a very stout and portly man. Uh, he's got a blue coat and uh, pale trousers flanked by his side with a very lanky teen uh, there at the town square on a little small platform. And the handbell goes on for like a few seconds. People who have put their lights up are kind of like peeking out their doors and starting to come out and within like a few moments there's surprisingly a large crowd and is then... Oleg still next to me? oh yeah who, who is that coming? over there? oh why that's ham and ham? and you get to hear the ham the large man talking oh yes oh yes oh yes the following is a decree from the most distinguished but generous Burgomaster Randovich, to which we are all indebted in one form or another. The Burgomaster makes it known that the following persons are to report to his residence, and he'll wave his hand, and there is like a larger house in town. It's like on the corner of the town square, and it's just it w could have been mistaken for like a grocer with the width and breadth of it um, but it's just like a big one story it's like these persons are to report to the burgomaster's residence as soon as it is possible and then when his other elbow he'll tap it into the young lad next to him who <coughs> <coughs> and unfurls a scroll and reads out Sigrid Hannah Owens Torin Forster Tristan Mr. Tree Scale Pro and Kendrick Dan Dan Danter Kuthilian uh, and then he rolls it up <clears throat> He's obviously not talking about me. Dander. So have, have fun in there. <laughs> These persons are suspected, and now he kind of works into the crowd, not of being charlatans, burglars, vagabonds, or instigators. You are to draw no conclusions. And by now you are sure, uh, Hannah, that the entire town is staring at you and the hospice and Oleg out here. Do a little wave. Uh, everybody just kind of like blanks. Uh, let it also be known that... Uh, and he does turn to look directly at you. Oleg, it's your turn to light the village lamps tonight. 
and Oleg next to you and just goes, Ugh. Uh, I don't feel up to it, but I guess. <laughs> and then the kind of uh, ham and says like, that is all. And then he like pushes the lad down off the stage. Uh, and uh, like Glovia and the Greelands have come out and they kind of saw at least half of that. And then they kind of look at you and says like, what? Do you have to do with the burgomaster? I, I don't even know what a burgomaster is. Agreed. Does he make like really good food? It's the mayor, essentially. And says like, this is how we run things in Barovia. Each town has its own burgomaster. We pass down the title through heredity, though. Master Randovich has no children. Really? What is this man like? Uh, Glovia kind of gives a shrug and says, like, he is like the others, but uh, Marku and Krina, uh, they absolutely get this, like, foul look on their face, and they look at each other, and Marku even goes... <clears throat> He taxes, and he takes, and while the rest of us starve, he he's going to be the last one in a rush now, if it was up to him. But he's been Burgomaster, and we have all survived. We band together here in a now. We take care of each other. Huh. Sounds like you need you need a new one. It's best it doesn't have kids. <laughs> if if something were to happen to him, Kendrick, no. Are you? I <laughs> no. I'm not. I'm just asking a question. Kendrick, no. <laughs> I'm seriously not saying we're going to do that. I'm legitimately. <laughs> then there's curious. no reason for you to ask. Because I'm curious. What happens if there are no children? And a burgomaster dies or leaves, is it a vote kind of thing? Yep. Like, how is a new one elected? I'm legitimately just curious here. The Greelands actually are not sure. Uh, they haven't, in their memory, had to have like a new burgomaster uh, elected or picked. Uh, Glovia seems to think about it for a moment and says, "Like my." husband's family, the Falunescos, would have been the next oldest in town. Maybe the burden would have to fall upon my house, but I almost have my hands full just running the hospice. So they're not quite sure what would happen. Okay. Is there a reason they had to specifically say that we weren't suspected of anything? Uh, Glovia has just come back into town, so she's going to ask, Are you charlatans or the like? Well, he is, but... Eh. Only when necessary. Hmm? Well, it's Charl what are charlatans? Uh, <laughs> well... Um, sometimes <laughs> people say things that aren't exactly true, uh, lie, tell stories, and otherwise swindle people, uh, for money or otherwise personal gain. Um, sometimes just amusement. So, okay, so you. Yes. All right, I, I know my, I know. Let the look for it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Torin likes Sigrid. <laughs> There's like a double Run. nod that goes on. Like, yep, yep. no high fiving, Brothers. but it's that solid. Mm -hmm. like, like, finally, someone understands. <laughs> uh, Glovia says that she's going to uh, have Serena help her, like, clean up Demu, and uh, the Greelins are going to clean, are going to uh, close up the seven tables for the night. Um,. They do kind of give you advice in that, well, he is the Burgomaster, but 
He wouldn't dare touch you here in the village, not after all you've done for us so far. Mm, this seems really suspicious. Yes, it does. Mm. Um, Dantier is going to turn to Glovia and just thank her mm. for saving the boy mm. and for helping with the corpse. Uh, she says that it's part of her duties here. She, uh, she travels from here sometimes to Velaki, sometimes to the little village of Barovia to kind of offer similar services. Regardless, thank you. Even if it's your job, you still deserve thanks for it. And she'll give like a little smile at that point. Uh, but it's like a tired one as she goes back inside to the hospice. So... Nice. So the seven the seven tables is closing up. Uh, uh, Grigori Woolbach's place is there. You've got your little cabin. Uh, Aya's gonna come out and says like, "If you're going to get, if you're going to get in trouble, it would have happened already. <laughs> I think you can handle anything." Thank you. I am going to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good idea. <laughs> she like starts trudging to uh, the Vaduva cabin. So, uh, shall we? Hmm. Yes. Sure. Yep. That was great. I'll head. I'll. I'll lead the charge. <laughs> uh, it's already now like if they gave it a regular time, it would be like seven thirty in the evening. The night's fog is starting to sneak its way down the cliff propelled by some winds that are starting to pick up and come into the town. And like you saw, the Burgomaster's home is quite large compared to the other homes uh, within Orashna. And it kind of leaves little doubt who controls the purse strings around here. Like this is, they've got some nice eaves and that. But as you come around to where the entrance would be, in front of the house here on the road is actually a very elegant Vardo, uh, a round-topped wagon. Uh, and it's adorned with very bright colors and images of red roses on here. And as you even like, just get close to the door of this small, uh, of this large house, uh, the door front door opens and there's this very stoic and... <laughs> Fine dressed servant. Uh it says You are expected and just uh, lends a hand pointing towards the interior. Heading on in. Huh? Yeah. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do I don't do politics. <laughs> I'm sure I wouldn't know of such things as the servant like just waves you in. And as you all come in, you see that the furniture in here is just has those flourishes, the carvings. It's very deep and vibrant colors on all this upholstery. There's even, you haven't noticed this anywhere else in the town, especially coming from the hospice, but there's even <laughs> the faint scent of spices and... Oh. Just well-oiled leathers uh, filling the air. And so as you come round, a uh, servant leads you to the parlor uh, through an entrance and past a sitting room. There's a large round table uh, covered in black velvet cloth uh, dominating this parlor. At the far end of that table, there's a lady. She's of a grandmotherly sort. There's like, it's definitely aged. Um, <laughs> and dressed in, in bright colors. And as you're entering the parlor, she uh, has a bit of a smile on her face. And though not looking at you, she pulls a deck of lacquered cards out from within her dress from somewhere. And she just spreads them out with a nice flourish. Like, you can hear the clacks of them as they hit each other as she brought them out, and then when she spreads them, there's just, like, that faint... Don't you just get a head, like, straight to her? 
And she smiles and like bids you sit. There's like a little stool oh, yeah. next to her. Totally. <laughs> um, and then behind her, there's a rotund man in very fine clothing also. And he's just staring out the window. And he's just kind of like impatiently chewing on his thumbnail. And he's not even looking at you as you come in. But the, the servant will uh, uh, give a little... <clears throat> sir. And he's still looking out the window, but after a few uncomfortable moments, <laughs> he's, let's see. I am Burgomaster Randovich. You are the ones that were called. This is, and uh, he's kind of reaching for. A maybe a nice word, probably, um, but it's like coming a little slower. And <laughs> so, uh, what you get here is that the actually roll me an insight check, like because he's reacting to you with uh, having been called in and oh, nice. Uh, I have a dirty twenty. Twenty-one for Torin. Oh, nice. Are we all ro- are we all rolling insight? Uh, if you wish, it'll help the group average. Yeah. Unless you do bad. <laughs> Unless you do bad, then you're not rolling. I did a twelve. Dang. I did a twelve as well. Hey. So you're not rolling. Oh. I did. <laughs> okay. Um. So he definitely knows all of your names, but not with any kind of familiarity. Like, he's almost listing them off of, of just that, a list. And when he... But he knows your names. Like, he says, like, you must be the Mr. Tree, the Torin Forster, the Miss Owens, Sigrid, and the, the Dantir, Kuli, Kuth, Kuth. Yep, 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 yep. Happens all the time. Mm. <laughs> this is and he, with his paws here it's like he's trying to reach for an article of respect but the way that he says Madam Ava uh, is that kind of like in a business way like where you maybe don't agree with this person but uh, there's somebody who you're not supposed to insult <laughs> <laughs> so the forced uh, mister. Yeah. Uh, she does. Like, she is of Livistani. At my request, she performed a reading for me earlier today, and foresaw something ominous and, frankly, unusual. Among other portents, she mentioned you, individually and by name. She said, there would be an army of the dead, Mm. a delicate powder box, a beautiful woman, and you, and you are here. And he looks down at Madam Ava, and she has not reacted to anything that he says. She just kind of like starts flipping over the cards, uh, one on this side, one on this side, one in the center. And then kind of shuffles them together. And uh, she says, I believe we can find more accurate information by performing a group reading. I have special abilities, though it would require the participation of all to be successful. And... Can't. Yeah, go ahead. Dantir's just going to turn around right towards Torin and be like, come on! Uh, while th- when she sees like Dantir's like, positive in uh, reaction, she pockets her deck of lacquered cards and withdraws from almost the same dress pocket? Where is she putting these? There's like a fist-sized <laughs> sphere 
of crystal <laughs> in almost the same motion. Uh, the cards are gone. There's a crystal. And she sets this orb on the table uh, on top of this little silver stand that she's brought out. There is no need for caution. Close your eyes. Clear your thoughts. Oh. Down okay. here is close his eyes and is clearing his thoughts. <laughs> Hannah will do that thing where she like closes her eyes, but then she like keeps Peaks. peeking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lauren will just stare at her. Then she just has like the biggest <laughs> smile. Sigrid, <laughs> uh-huh. Torin, there will be things in this vision. That will be for you. It is good that you see them. <laughs> is, Does... it, is Mr. Tree just like... <laughs> How's Mr. Tree doing? He is not cool <laughs> with this. This does not sound like a good idea. Madam Ava specifically holds out this crone hand to Mr. Tree's big scaly fingers and then turns it up, palm up, then just smiles at Mr. Tree. I don't know. She's also offered this over to Dantier, but like oh, Dantier yeah. might have like just grabbed onto it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Just like it's like a child. <laughs> yep. He's does, so excited. Does my little voice have anything to say about this? To uh, on asking to that that inner wisdom that comes when you need it so f- often in the past it urges not far away just sort of dampened that you need information yeah. but also don't go into this blind why haven't you checked the house And that kind of happens to Torin, like Torin's like thinking and staring, and then suddenly he's taken aback, like, oh, whoops. Oh. <laughs> like the house we're in right now? Uh, there's like a kind of an affirmative. Can I do <laughs> immediately upon that? I'm going to do my eyes of the grave again. Oh, nice. To, de- to detect undead within 60 feet. Oh man, this lady is super old, but she is alive. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, if there was if there was anybody closest here to the undead, it would be this. Uh, but no, she's alive. She's got like some vigor. Um, the burgomaster up there is also base human at this point, and the the others of your companions they're all still alive for the moment. So um. Then I will approach slowly, like I'm going to par- participate, but I'm going to be looking around the room. Keeping high instead. perception. All right. Yes. Nice. Okay. Um, how does Sigrid react with that? She's watching Torin carefully, but uh, she steps forward and, well, well first of all, does um, does Madame Eva remind her of, like, the wise women that would have been in her her? northern village or something like that like what's her gut feeling on her oh good uh, so what was your insight oh I never rolled oh go ahead. go ahead eight <laughs> nice okay she's dressed very flamboyantly you think like you did not have these colors uh, back in your village so um, but with your travels you kind of think it's like this Maybe one of her grandchildren gifted her this. She seems very aged. Um, and this that would be something that grandchildren would do for their elders. So uh, you think that with this clothing and that the way that the Burgomaster did, even if begrudgingly, gave her respect, um, certainly the way that she moved with her hands was skilled, uh, you would probably give her the benefit of the doubt. You don't know if she is a wise woman, but you do think that she is a skilled woman. And even those you know were unless they were stealing directly out of your pockets 
uh, or tricking you in some way, even those don't run very fast. All right. Um, she'll stare at her for another second or two, and then she'll just step forward into the into the circle. Very nice. Okay. Uh, so you all once all of your eyes close finally at the same time so that you're all uh, able to concentrate a feeling of restful warmth washes over you and from seemingly nowhere you hear the very delicate pluckings of a harpsichord and images of objects start fading into view and eventually you find yourselves in a lavish parlor in a large thoughtfully decorated manner and there is a roaring fire crackling in the enormous hearth and there are windows spanning an entire wall of this room and it's just flooding light from in here out onto a dramatic terrace overlooking the night shrouded valley below you can see woods deep below and there is a young girl in a white dress a very young girl and she's facing those windows and she is sitting and playing this large keyed instrument and you are there so at this point i would say let's take a short break let's take like a six minute break okay. at this point and we'll come back to this vision yeah Awesome. Freaky.
Ah, that's our six-minute timer. Mm. All right. All right, back to Barovia. <laughs> so where you are is now a little different. Uh, there is, of course, this little girl in a white dress. Uh, she's got her back to you. It certainly sounds like she's very skilled because she's performing this kind of fast-paced waltz, you'd say. Are we still all holding hands? No, actually. Okay. Uh, you are standing in this parlor. Um, there's things around. Um, it's a very large room. It's maybe like 60 feet long and 45 feet wide. Uh, there's some furniture around the room. There's a table. Looks like there's a tea set. Uh, there's, in fact, this smell of uh, cinnamon spiced cider and mm. something else. Something else just underneath that. Uh, so this is a dream. It is a vision. Kind of things are fuzzy a little bit at the border, but certainly there's bright light filling this room from the fire. Uh, a lot of candles spread out through the room. And there's even like a lot of toys against one of the corners, oh. and uh, some things on a desk. Like a uh, there's a this this is almost like a study. So you imagine some of the things that there's some traditional rich studies. There's like a bust, some of marble bust somewhere on here. Uh, there's like a book on a table, uh, the tea set, and then this girl and those floor to ceiling windows that just look elegant. A um, uh, big, big family portrait over the fire. Uh, what do you want to do? I would like. Can I see over the little girl's shoulder? Um, sure. I just want to see if, like, she's playing. I want to see if there's sheet music. There is. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like it's. Uh, it's a little hard to read from this far away, like fuzziness in dreams, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, how about from Mr. Tree? It's a big room. Girl playing. He's just not. He's just not happy with the situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're just like scowling for the most part, and just like crossed arms, just like skeptical. Hmm. So is Mr. Tree like? Um, what kind of armor are you wearing? He's just wearing like some basic leather. That's what I thought, because Mr. Tree's a druid and so doesn't wear metal armors and things. So has, as a dragonborn druid, just, you know, kind of, scales are already tough. You can only add so much to it. And so as Mr. Tree, like, folds his arms over, um, there's a lot of rustling and these, like, big poofy sleeves kind of get even up to Mr. Tree's chin. There's just, like, these velvet poofs. Uh, and like looking down their sleeves all the way down with like these ruffles at the end uh, and as Mr. Tree is kind of disturbed by it the rest of you are similarly finding out that you are without any armors weapons spell books you are dressed in rather formal attire uh, for some social event maybe uh, for all of the male characters, you have very puffy sleeves, and for those female characters, you are in very formal dress. Uh, and it is... <laughs> uh, if you have not been in formal dress before, it is very wide. Uh, there's almost I'm a petticoat underneath. So horrified. <laughs> <laughs> like, it swings as you... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hannah is horrified, yet also kind of a little naturally in it. Mm -hmm. It's pure velvet on all of it. <laughs> different colors. His sleeves are so puffy. Mm -hmm. um, What's Torin doing? Torin is sort of he's he's less disturbed than Mr. Tree visibly. He's visibly less disturbed. I won't say that he's less disturbed. Mm -hmm. um, but he's He really wants to ignore the child, but he doesn't feel like he can. Sure. So he'll sort of clear his throat and um, make some really low comment about 
how well she's playing, but he doesn't know music, so he doesn't know, really. <laughs> so it's just, it's more like a mumble, like, compliment, sort of. Maybe you can't tell? Oh. Do, okay. <laughs> do I still have my instrument? Absolutely oh, not. No. Dang it. Um, okay. Um, then Dante is just going to move a little bit closer to see, like, get a better look at what she's, what the music is. Oh, sure. Um, at the compliment, um, she's going to, f- the little girl's going to finish off a little bit of it in like, ding, ding, and she turns and says like, thanks, my mommy taught me. And then as she turns around, um, it is suddenly revealed to all of you that uh, she is a sweet little girl. She looks like she's got um, brown hair. Uh, it's not exactly in curls, but it looks like it's made up to be very nice. Um on the right side of her face, uh, on the left side of her face, it is almost entirely rotted away. Like there is, uh, uh, there used to be flesh here. Yeah. <laughs> and her entire left side, where that front of the dress is, is open and gaping with wounds, and her left arms are riddled with open sores and the sight is just grotesque and shocking and so uh, for all of you who now stand with this girl revealed all at the same time uh, I need you all to do a horror saving throw oh dear uh, which is a DC 11 at this point and it'll be a charisma saving throw oh Oh, no well it's not bad Oh, hey. 16. I forget. I'm a cleric. I get proficiency in that. Yeah. Uh, That's a 22. Two. Okay. (laughs) Oh, no. I got an 18. Nice. I got a 14. Okay. Uh, So this is generally very uh, bad condition of this person. And Sigrid, already on edge by this petticoat, is turns up and it's like there's two worlds colliding at the same time here and Sigrid you just you are not taking this well roll me a d100 oh no oh no fantastic <laughs> with a 58 um oh no you are just you cannot handle this this is this is like an attack on your person this is the dress the sanity this should not be um when we come next to sigrid um you must use your action uh each round to attack the nearest creature oh, of which oh, no. you have your four partners who you've just uh, had a fair bit of rescue with, and of course this little girl. Uh, so we'll get to Secret in a second. Uh, what's Hannah doing uh, after this? Uh, Look here. Well, the girl is just smiling. Yeah, she's a little disturbed, but she's managing to hold it together. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any doors or around us, way out of the room? Yeah, over so there's the wind wall of windows, and then there's uh-huh. the fireplace. And opposite the fireplace, it looks like there's uh, three doors that kind of would lead into. Uh, yeah, she's the rest gonna of the like house. inch her way over to one of the doors, mm-hmm. like backing her way over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the little oh, girl is kind of like looking at the rest girl. of you now that she's not playing, and she uh, sees. Does Mister Tree have horns? Right. Yeah. Just like one's one's partially broken though. And left jagged. Uh, she'll, the girl will kind of lift her arm to her head and kind of like feel where the horn would be on her own head. It says, like, hmm, does that hurt? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's actually used to kids asking him about it. Hmm. So like, he's just like, no, it's all good. My mommy's very smart. She can fix people. My daddy's very smart too, but he fixes toys. He makes the best toys. And then that's when, Hannah, you get to the doors. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what do you want to do? Um, to open one of them. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so you grab onto this door handle, and it it uh, turns, and then it stops, uh, uh, like as if it's been locked in this short part. As if, as if it's been locked? Yeah, because it it's only turns a little bit. So she will take her thieves picks out of her hair and try and pick the lock. Fantastic. All right, give me that skill roll. Do I just click on thieves tools, I assume? It should be. It'll be thieves tools, and then let's put dexterity on there. Let's make it a... Trying to be real quick about it. I clicked on it, but nothing happened. <laughs> it might show up a small box, and it'll say what skill you want to use for this. Uh, oh, it has like a tribute, and it says mm-hmm. query. Yes. So. Okay. You'll pick like dexterity. Dexterity. Okay. There we go. Twenty-two. Oh, fantastic! Uh, so you move your thieves' tools down, and they, uh, as you got it over here, you stick it into this uh, lock, and as you move it in, it's. You're putting it in exactly the right place, and you uh, put down the pin so you can start holding down and moving tumblers. And there's a certain point where it's like you have stuck them into pudding. Mm-hmm. Like, there's the lock, and it's solid, and then as you move in, and so you're poking out an edge of it, um, it's like there's like a soft blanket that you're poking into. Uh, and then within the moment, like maybe pushing it a little harder or twisting it, uh, the doorknob uh, doesn't turn, but it kind of like droops a little bit, and uh. the lock also droops, and the lock hole kind of like opens wide, and your like thieves' tools uh, kind of digs a crevice until your thieves' tools just like flip out. Oh, uh, no. like it is almost melted, and then it goes back into place. This and, place is creepy, guys. And the little girl says. Like, Mommy keeps the doors locked. And she says, like, do you want to see my toys? And she, like, cops off the chair, where she, uh, the bench where she was playing the harpsichord, and she'll start walking around the room, and she'll bring up some, like, puppets. Um, she has, like, a little one that's in a, a cactus suit. Uh, there's another one that's, like, a, and it's, like, a... The one that's in a cactus suit, it's like a skeleton. Like, it's supposed to be like a bear. Uh, but it has... Uh, it's just like the face of it that's almost pure bone. And it's wrapped up in this like bear fur uh, with like little spines on it. And it's um, like, this is... this is. Uh, he's got the plague. And she moves on to another one. And it's like, and this is Mr. Bun Bun. And there's like a rabbit there, but it has like fangs. Um... And she's like, and look, this, these are the ones my daddy made. And she goes to, like, these little toy soldiers, and she'll, like, wind them up, and they'll start marching uh, across the room. And cool. says, uh, here's another one. And she just, like, goes around to her toys, and some of them move, like, have blinking eyes uh, that don't blink at the same time. Like, they'll wink <laughs> slowly. Uh, another one, there's, like, a marionette that she kind of, like moves and but the strings get tangled and so it looks like there's like a string looped around its neck and it is just like hanging there and the rest of it moves fine but the neck is like broken um and so she's showing you these dolls um and she moves past the tea it's like would you would you like to have a tea party they're very nice my mom puts them out for guests it's good for you she says and I'm not drinking anything she Do you have to. guests often? Mm, less than usual. We used to have a lot. My mom is very smart. And Who's she would help mother? fix people. Oh, that's my mom. And she points to the big, big family portrait. And now that somebody's pointed out, it kind of like comes into focus for everyone. <laughs> like it was fuzzy before. And there is a little girl. Uh, who's dressed in like blue dress this time and a woman in a fancy green dress with like auburn hair and a man with glasses on like small glasses out of the front with kind of white 
in his, a lot of white in his hair. Like, that's my mommy and that's my daddy. <laughs> this do, they, do, do they look familiar at all? They absolutely look familiar. Uh, so what you see there on the fireplace, uh, this is uh, Glovia Falonescu. Knew it! And my, my mommy fixes people! Mm -hmm. And there, uh, now that it's coming into focus, you can even see some writing at the bottom. And it'll say uh, Glovia, Lucian, and Isabella. And then underneath all three of them, it'll say Falonescu. Falonescu. And it's like, does she look, does the girl look the same as she does now in the picture? Half of her does. <laughs> <laughs> Which so half? She, did she look completely fine in the picture? Oh yeah, she looks completely fine in the picture. You look a little different than you do in the picture. Did something happen? I got sick. I must, I must be very bad because it makes mommy very sad and daddy very angry Torin is going to be very bad but he's also going to test a theory okay and oh no I can do this nicely okay I still have one use less yes Eyes of... yes yes is she free and undead because mm -hmm. I have one more use of eyes of the grave it's hmm that's interesting there are Let's see, undead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are two things lighting up as undead in this room. Oh no! There is very clearly the girl, mm -hmm. um, Isabella, um, and like from the looks of her, it's like that's not normal. And this is a vision, but like some senses are going off um, within the vision. There's the girl, and then there's that marble bust that's over on the desk by the journal that stone bust is also set off as undead. Hmm. It's at this point that Sigrid needs to attack someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh I dear. I don't have my weapons, right? You absolutely do not have your weapons of any kind. There are toys. Uh, there's the marble bust. There's a journal. There's the tea set. There's the harpsichord <laughs> piano. If you are if you are ever a bard and your DM is maybe not paying attention, always put down your instrument as harpsichord. It's just a big piano. <laughs> it's like a... I mean, how's Sigurd improvise? Um, honestly, I think she's just gonna run at someone and just try to throttle them. That's fantastic. I think we've got uh, fair. Torin's definitely near. Uh, Torn and Dantier are near the girl because they're looking at the thing. Mr. Tree is maybe still in the center of the room. And Hannah is over by the door having her uh, keys disputed by the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think in the beginning I probably was closer to, closest to Torin. Sure, um, yeah. I don't know that they moved. I don't know who's closest to me. Let's um, say it's Torin. Torin's talking yeah, to Isabella. She's he would, he wouldn't there. have moved much, so. Yeah. All right, I'm just mad eyes, just <laughs> coming at him like just, ah. it's screaming. Just Torin, so. maybe you're maybe you're puzzled. Maybe you're like something behind <laughs> you. Secret's coming for, but no, it's you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> screaming like a banshee. Yeah, screaming like a nah in a petticoat and just like running. <laughs> um, so oh, I'm, um, yeah. One thing though, Secret's has only worn a dress a couple times, and certainly nothing like this. Mm -hmm. Would it be unwieldy? Like, would, could she trip? <laughs> <laughs> that like, sounds she If she's wearing heels, <laughs> she's this could be the first time heels. she wore heels. <laughs> yeah, probably guaranteed. It's like she's on tiptoe this entire time, and that um, uh, I think that's fair. Uh, if you want this to happen, we make this happen. So right before she gets yes. to Secret, and Secret, you're kind of checking. Is like, is she attacking? Is the girl turning on you? Is what, what's happening, Secret? What's what are you attacking with? Um, but like right as you're getting there, just Secret like falls flat over, um, <laughs> and you can see that this is absolutely the heels that have done it, and the petticoat kind of like goes up with the cage of it. Um, she's wearing long fluffy unders, um, and. There are polka dots at some points. Oh, God. Uh, Sigrid has no idea, and you should probably not tell her. 
at uh, any point um, after or before this happens. Uh, but she's still like growling on the floor, I imagine. Uh, Are you quite all right? <laughs> You're caught up in the dress. <laughs> yeah, she's thrashing and still screaming. She's there is no rational rational rationality in her face at all. Fair. She's just gone. So there's some screaming that's going on down here, um, and that's where uh, in the background. And Hannah, you're gonna hear this the best, but mm -hmm. in the background, all of you can kind of hear from beyond the doors. Uh, I... <gasps> and, and even uh, it's probably not gonna affect Secret yet, but like within, there's like a beat, and then another, <gasps> and that one at least can get through to. Secret also, and I'm gonna have her come out of her madness, uh, quick. And Isabella kind of like gets a sad look on her face, like a kind of uncomfortable look. That. Hmm? What is beyond that door? I will help Secret up off the floor. <laughs> Thank you. I don't. I I don't know. You fell over. What happened? I don't remember. It's. Mm. I just got. I just everything went blurry, like just off. Mm. Well, none of this is real. I. Oh, thanks. Okay. Okay. It's not real. It's not real. Mm. That's. Um, that's my mommy. She's trying to fix daddy. What happened to daddy? Mm, daddy got very angry. And hmm, they were talking. My mommy told me to stay here, but I heard something at the door. She said that she can't fix me without help from the pretty lady. And she said something about a box. Only that the pretty lady wants the box and daddy didn't want her to do this and she kind of goes a, a little quiet at that point and uh, she'll look at the table and says like I guess you... I guess maybe we shouldn't have tea <laughs> I'm going to creep towards the marble bust. Mm -hmm. It is uh, sitting on this kind of thick pedestal there. There Now that you're very close, it's kind of hard to focus, though, in a dream. So give me an investigation check. It's like you're trying to literally focus your eyes onto this this metal placard oh, that's nope. starting to focus. <laughs> that's, a, that's a one. Okay. <laughs> like you're staring at this. And you're like, what is wrong with my eyes? And Boring. like, you're close to the where the tea tray is, and the there's like a a book on this desk. And then almost as if when you're thinking this thought, uh, there's a, suddenly a pair of eyeglasses next to you, on the the tea tray. There's uh, it looks like they have like amber lenses, except they have like reptile eyes in the center. Like there's a sliver oh, of green. Why is it glass. always eyes? The whip has eyes. These things have eyes. Oh. Did you find more eye things? No. <laughs> everybody turns. There's eye things there. Actually, everybody else can see the glasses as they appeared on the table now. Don't you going to go up to them? No, stop picking things up. And You're like a child. I am a child. Um, without putting them on, I am going to look through them. Oh, so you touch them. Fantastic. All right. Yep. So, uh, as you like, pick it up and hold them in front of you, and um, where, what do you look at? Um, I, I do like a scan. Uh, so Torin looks mad. Uh, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, Secret looks unhappy. Uh, Mr. Tree looks nonplussed, maybe, at this point. Um, Hannah's by the door and maybe slightly frustrated. She's frustrated as hell. When you pass it over Isabella, like, she looks okay. Like, there is no sores. There are no uh, damage to her. Like, she looks like an okay little girl. Um, if I zoom it over the 
foggy bust area. Uh, the nameplate comes into focus, and the bust looks a rather like a very stern face on it. Uh-huh. Uh, and it says on that bust, Lord Strad von Zerovich. And as you're like looking at it, the eyes on the bus turn to look directly back at you. And oh I'll my need god, do I see that? Horror check. Oh, you okay. do not. <laughs> okay, thank god. So, hey. Dantir, I'll need a higher horror check. They're hey. staring right at it. Charisma, right? Charisma saving throw. Beautiful. Um, okay, that is going to be a uh, dirty 20. Nice, nice. Uh, you, you are kind of like taken aback. Um, but and maybe lower the lower the yeah, a... shades a little bit. Um, and, and go ahead. did I make it? Yeah, you made it. You don't go insane for a second. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to look at these glasses. Do they look like the glasses that the dad has on in the picture? They do not look like the same frames. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, sorry, they do not look like the same glass. Like the ones in the picture, mm-hmm. those look like transparent. They do yeah. look like the same frames. They're like circular uh, and they have little bits on I... the side that wiggle. But in those frames, they look like stylized, sorry, those lenses. Uh-huh. Yellow amber and those green slits in the center. Um, the, the, who's, who's Isabella? Like, that yes. bust. Um, Strad von Zarovich. Oh, he is the ancient. He is the land. May he live forever. And she kind of like mm. rattles this off. Yeah. That's not creepy. <laughs> he is our lord protector here in Barovia. He is the count. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do your parents like him? It doesn't matter if anyone likes or not. He is the ancient. He is the land. Okay. Does this does this sound like like ceremonial? Like you know how some people you know the would refer, the yeah good. would would refer to like the king, their Majesty, her Majesty, or the Countess, or whatever. Does it sound oh. it could like like habit or like true belief in this statement? Ah, that will require an insight check. Okay. Certainly, you've heard it before from a couple of the other Russians. Okay. Twenty. Uh, this sounds like uh, more, especially with the Isabella saying this, uh, it sounds like this is just something that is accepted, uh, kind of like Her Majesty or mm, or, okay. or His Eminence. Uh, this is, he is the Ancient. He is the land. And uh, she sees that Hannah uh, is has kind of been messing with this door. Mm. Uh, and she looks to Sigrid, who is still kind of upset and <laughs> it's like you know you look like strong ladies are you the ones who are going to help my mommy no. are you here for the box what's the box and she'll turn and she'll skip over to the table uh, where's the tea set and the book and when she reaches it now there's a silver box there and as you get closer uh you see that there's she's opening the box and there's a golden light that's spilling out and she reaches in and she pulls out a simple wooden box uh and this is the source of the golden light and she shows it to you who are close and just as you're able to focus on it as part of the dream, you know, the things have gone from fuzzy around the edges to focus here where you can see uh, the sides of this box and, and its wood section. It looks like um, almost like a powder box, like what someone would open to for makeup. Um, mm-hmm. The serenity of the moment shatters as a figure comes crashing through mm. the window wall. There are thick strings of wispy ether attached to his arms and legs similar to those of a marionette 
and he snatches, he's just come swung halfway into this room, snatches the wooden box from Isabella's hand, and with a backhanded swing of a silver dagger, strikes Isabella's head from her shoulders without so much as a glance. And all of you who witnessed this marionette's entrance and the girl's subsequent decapitation, roll me a horror th saving throw. <laughs> uh, that would be everybody. Here we go. 18. Hang on, I'm getting 17. Fifteen. What is this? Is a charisma? What is this? A charisma yep. again? This would be a charisma saving throw. Saving throw. Okay. Fifteen. Nice, nice. Uh, I can't see past. Oh, nineteen for Hannah. Okay, dokie. Uh, let's see. Did anybody get less than thirteen at this point? Mm. No. Okay, good. Um, so you're throwing back, horrified, and like, oh no, this is what <laughs> happened. Uh, but. <clears throat> Uh, who did somebody get a nineteen on this one? Yeah, Hannah did. Okay, Hannah, um, you're you're fair enough away, and maybe you've seen some things, uh, but you're not. You're like it's like ah, uh, that's well, that's not good. But it's roll pretty me, shitty. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty shitty. Um, roll me an investigation check. Okay, I'm good at these. Sixteen. Okay. Um, so you're looking at this, and those wisps of Either these like smoky strings, uh, they do come off and they kind of loop and they go around this this puppet, this doll. Uh, but at the far end, where they're like leading out of the window, out into the cold, out into the the woods, they actually loop back and they lead to the giant image of Glovia, who also has strings now in the painting attached to her and from around everyone in this room there is a voice that booms from overhead and it says bring it to me laszlo and the puppet looks up and snarls almost and gathers its wispy strings and with its silver dagger cuts and severs them cleanly and it looks at you and growls and leaps out through the window and into the cold night and you all awake from this ritual because the burgomaster's yelling run Oleg and you're snapped back to reality and regaining control of your body. You see the Burgomaster Randovich yelling out the window that he was standing in front of before. It's open and he's half leaning out of it. And you can see from here, it's a big enough window, there is some dark figure chasing Oleg in his vest oh, down the street. Oh. And its head is cocked strangely to oh, one side no. and screams are coming from all parts of the village <sighs> and Burgomaster <laughs> Ivan Randovich as you start to smell smoke in the air turns to you and yells snap out of it we're under attack and with the burning of Arash now we will go ahead and end tonight's session oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> and we will start next week with what you get to do uh, to as you come out save of save Oleg. <laughs> I have to give him back his coat. Oh gosh, you have it like it's here and it's thick and it's warm. I just want to hit something. <laughs> you tried. You, you tried. You did. Oh, you hit the floor. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, that's true. Oh, my god, awful dress. Roll for damage on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just uh, this. The village is on fire, as you're going to be able to see. Um, as per usual. There are maybe some other things that are happening at the same time. So our next session will. Uh, this was a lot of role playing, a lot of skills. Uh, the next one will be a lot of. Uh, hidden stuff. Hidden stuff. <laughs> and fire and hopefully death. saving things. A lot of fire. Hopefully not as much death. Who knows? <laughs> A little bit of death. 
I mean, there will be a lot of death. That's that's for sure. <laughs> Just hopefully it's the enemies. Yeah. <laughs> Positive thoughts. All right. Awesome. <laughs> so cool. So, so good. I'm really Very glad fantastic. you're over here. Uh, I'm really glad, Miss Misery, you're able to join us this week. And, Yay! Uh, and feel better soon. Yes. yes. I'm trying. <laughs> it worked really well. Secret is getting over that cold. <laughs> From a blizzard. Secret's tougher yep. stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's amazing. Um, Dantir, you actually wake up when you do, the glasses are still in your hand. Yes! <laughs> Uh, at, yeah, You're going to turn points. into that old lady from Labyrinth where she just has everything piled on top of her. Oh, yeah. No, like, I was, I was, if, if, if I had the option, I, like, when she was, like, running towards the thing, I, I wanted to be like, so I'm, while she's doing that, I'm just going to slip the glasses into my pocket and then, like, hope that when I wake up, they're there. Like, sure. It, I, I'm apparently just collecting eyeball related artifacts. You'd be surprised so. how many things, artif eyeball artifacts there are. Uh, <laughs> um, and it would require some investigation, maybe some identify some things to see what they can do. But at the very least, they seem to work funny in dreams. Nice. And, and they look like lizard eyes. If you, when Jurassic Park came out, and they yes. they would sell these yes. toys, like there's some you can buy, and they look like Velociraptor eyes. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. I could wear my Velociraptor mask. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend that. That's what Dantir looks like to everybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're making fun of a dragonborn at this point. Mm. <laughs> not true. <laughs> he turns and like, Mr. Tree is not having it. <laughs> uh, all of you are back to wearing your regular armors and, and leathers. Awesome. Your weapons are at your side. And you still have that benefit of the uh, long rest because all of you did some good survival checks looking for Vassal and Demu. Uh, nobody got infected with anything yet, and uh, and nobody got decapitated in this group. Yet, yet, yet. <laughs> uh, Isabella, though, eh? We'll see. It's rough. Um, it's just a good pausing point, and because uh, the next time will be real busy with everything. <laughs> a good cliffhanger. Awesome. Well, thank you for DMing, sir. Thank um, you very much. Be back next week, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, this week. Yeah. Similar right. time. Awesome. So 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and uh, all the other ones that I'm not going to do math bat. for. <laughs> same bat time, same bat channel. Oh, man, we should have called this session the marionette. Take that back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix it in editing. We'll fix that in post. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, but, it always yeah. depends on how far you get. Certainly, he was yeah. uninvited. <laughs> <laughs> and there were some ghastly things. A lot of ghastly things. Uh, and you did save. Uh, you you really did save uh, the boys from rising as whites themselves as undead. Uh, uh, there's a couple of rites that you can do. There's a little bit of uh, things that are extra. But it is absolutely a thing that can happen that if you have been killed by undead, you may rise as them that very next next night. Mm -hmm. so, good work. Undead are fun. <sighs> hey, awesome. Okay. Good then... night, everyone, and hope we survive. Ditto. Got this. <laughs> you got this. We got I this. I believe in you. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.